Hello class, week nine of 3D Basics. Uh, this week is a little bit of a hodgepodge. I think now that we're kind of at the halfway point of the semester, um, we kind of take our foot off the gas a little bit and um, we, we try to be a little bit more thoughtful with kind of the things that we're creating with the assignments. We're spending a little bit more time on assignments five and your final assignment and, uh, and working on kind of some how to make your scenes and your renders look a little bit more complete, have a little bit more excitement in them. So today we'll look at a couple of different things. Um, we'll look at um, some more lighting, how to create volumetric lighting. Uh, we'll look at it in both the EV renderer and <clears throat> excuse me, the cycles renderer because uh, they both they behave very differently. Um, we'll also look at uh, Using HDRIs, high dynamic range images, um, for like some environmental lighting. So the theme today is is uh, lighting, and obviously uh, assignment five. So let's start by actually looking at assignment five, uh, which is model a scene. So you can officially begin this starting this week. Um, we have a. Uh, several weeks to work on it. In fact, let's let's actually pull up the schedule. Um, so this is week nine here. Uh, whoops, more lighting in HDRIs. Um, begin assignment five. You have until, look at this, April 14th. So that's over one month from now to finish assignment five. Uh, and that's partly because we have a couple weeks off. So next week is spring break. So there's no lecture, no nothing next week. Uh, and then there's also a workshop day in between there. So assignment five is going to be due on April 14th. So let's look at the prompt here. Create a complete scene that you can include in your portfolio, indoor or outdoor. Could be a real place, your room, office, yard, maybe something fictional or from media. Um, Last semester, somebody recreated the the set of Jerry's apartment from the show Seinfeld. Um, you have lots of time to complete this, so try to push your creativity a bit. Get some inspiration and look at some reference materials. So this is 20 points. So this is double uh, our typical assignment. Get seven points for a level of effort. So this is uh, this is my... My, I, ha, I have free reign over seven points here. I'm looking for you to try to spend five to ten hours on this. Um, five points for including at least five modeled objects. Four points for lights and materials. Two points for providing a final render. And another two points for an on-time submission. Um, so we're... I want you to... And, like, again, it's a little ambiguous. But, like, a scene doesn't have to mean, like, an entire room... Um, it could mean like, uh, just like a corner of a room. So like there's a, a chair with a side table and a lamp and a book on it or something like that. Or ju just like f five different things that kind of go together to form a scene is, is more or less what I'm looking for. So like if, if I were to do this assignment, I would, I would want to do like, oh, you know, kind of like dark sort of like noir, imagery so like maybe i do like a dark s street corner with a street lamp and you know there's like a, maybe like one or two buildings and it's maybe it's like a high angle and there's you know some interesting lighting or something that you know it doesn't have to be like too complicated but I'm, i want a scene with five different elements so like if so for my five elements i'd maybe do like a lamp post a bench uh, a building in the background. Uh, maybe there's like a mailbox on the on the street, or like a little newspaper stand, or like maybe there's a car driving by or something. A car seems like it might be complicated, but maybe if I wanted to really put the time in to do it, I would. Um, so uh, looking back at the schedule, so you got you you got one, two, three, four, five weeks to do it. Um, so. so spend some uh, what i would like you to do is spend some of your time on this assignment like just experimenting seeing what you what you like making what is working for you maybe you start with one idea and it's not quite working and you want to try a different idea i encourage that so 
let's talk about uh, Blender. Oh, by the way, um, there's a, there was an update to Blender just within the last couple of days, um, Blender 3.1. So uh, update if you dare. Uh, I've you know oh, there's always just like minor improvements and things like that. Um, but I I downloaded 3.1, so that's what I'm rocking. All right, let's go to let's go to Blender. They've got this cool deer thing going on. A new general file. So let's we're we're gonna we're talking about lighting. My camera's off a little bit. We're talking about lighting. Uh, so first, I I'm I'm not sure how many of you are doing uh, rendering with EV versus rendering with cycles. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple things um, with both, so a couple of cool lighting things uh, with both render engines. And I should also say, I, I kind of, I, I didn't really talk about this much um, when, uh, when we were talking about rendering last week, but there are other render engines. Um, they're paid, so like you'd have to purchase a license to one of these things, but they're like, they could do some fancy stuff. Um, Octane. Uh, is one that I that I see a lot that does some really cool things. Octane Renderer that uh, works with Blender, um, but you get you know like they do some really cool like lighting effects and like neons and things like that. Um, Redshift is another one. I don't I don't believe Redshift works with um, Blender, but Redshift is a popular one for some other three D programs that's paid and whatnot. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's there are more than just EV and cycles, um, but those are those are the ones that come that are free. So anyway, we're we're doing uh, right now. We're talking about EV. So remember, render properties here. It's the back of a little DSL DSLR icon. Render engine EV and cycles. Uh, if you update, don't forget that you can change your. Um, uh, your cycles render device to your GPU, your graphic processing unit, if you have it, and you can look uh, look at your preferences and system and see if you have any of these options available to you if you have a graphics card and cycles render devices. Anyway, starting with EV. Um, so, um, I j I just need to model something super quick, like um. I want to I want to model a, a coffee cup. So real quick, I'm just gonna do a shift A. There's a plane. Uh, shift A, uh, a cylinder, uh, and that's fine for a cylinder. And then I'm gonna as a Z scale it down like this. I'm making a coffee cup. Um, tab for edit mode. Oh, you know what? Undo, 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 undo. Shift A. I don't want a cap. On the top for my cylinder, I want um, or a end gun cap. I want a triangle fan. There we go. Cool. Now I can whoops. GZ move this up. SC scale this down. This is going to be the bottom of the coffee cup. And tab for edit mode. Three for face select. I want all these guys. I want to eye insert faces. And then I want to select one of these. I'm going to alt. It's going to let me do a loop selection. Here we go. And I'm going to E extrude up like this. This is my coffee mug. Um, and then I need to like just like cut out a little handle or something. So why don't I, uh, I'm going to do some control R loop cut like this. I'll do a couple. I'll do a, one, a couple down here too. And then uh, you know I'll grab how big are how big our handles are on coffee mugs. So I'll grab each of these, e extrude out like that. Got a loop cut again, just here like that. Actually, why don't I undo that? Command Z, Control R, loop cut in the middle there. Right click, Control R, loop cut here. Right click. Oh, and I realize I don't have my uh, keyboard shortcuts. Hopefully, um, you're getting a little faster at doing these kinds of things. And then I'm going to go three for face select. I'm going to delete this face, delete faces. Whoops. I'm going to delete this face, 
delete faces. And then I'm going to grab uh, these four edges and hold down the shift key and also grab these four. Not that one in there, control click to get rid of that. Shift, click, 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 click. And then I'll right click and I am going to, do, 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 do. which one is it again? Bridge edge loops, this one right here. Great. All right, there's a coffee mug. <laughs> um, let's turn on X-ray select. You know, I'm never, I'm never satisfied. Uh, let's go one for vertex. I wanna, and I should have done this like on an axis. That makes sense, but of course I didn't make it easy on myself. Let's just grab all of these. GZ, move these up a little bit. Cool. What happens if we if we shade smooth and what? Oh yeah, so that's a little awkward here. Um, let's do Control Two and put a little uh, ease on here, or not ease, uh, subdivision on there. You know what? We'll call it good. Uh, here, no, no, we'll add a couple seams. We'll add a couple seams because that's what that's what normal people do. Maybe not normal people, but. Um, Let's like let's loop select this if I can if I alt click around there we go shift E to make a not seam I always confuse seam and crease we're adding a edge crease here with our subdivision so I can put a little crease on top there so it looks a little bit more rounded that's fine I don't love the handle um, let's get into edit mode. Um, you know what you can do? Here, here's another tip for uh, using a subdivision surface modifier. If we go to the our modifier properties tab here, um, there is, uh, on our subdivision surface, there's this little triangle here. And if you tick this, uh, and what it says is on cage, adjust edit cage to modifier result. So what it, what it does is it actually puts um, the, like, curved lines of the subdivision on it so you can see it because like you know look around here so you can see that these edges are curved but if i toggle this it's like this is the original shape underneath but this is the result after the um subdividing so sometimes this is handy especially if you can't see edges underneath the subdividing so i can select these do a shift e and you know cinch that in a little bit maybe that's too much Do the same here. Shift E. Pinch it in a little bit. I don't know. All right, there's there's my there's my dopey coffee mug. It's fine for what we're doing. Okay. Uh, and then I should. Um, oh, you know what? You know what? Okay, I'm never never enough. If I G uh, actually, if I turn on. Auto merge vertices here, and I go GG like that. Will that actually get rid of that? Sure. Let's do that. GG, slide that down, click. It's a little bit more of a normal shaped uh, coffee mug handle. Okay. And then GZ, just set it down on the ground. I should do my orthographic just to see. Get in real close. Oh, that's pretty good. Cool. Let's go to render preview. See what's going on here. Okay. Make my floor a little bigger. Um, let's talk about let's talk about lighting. So we've got one light in here. It's to, it's fine. It's acceptable. Um, what if so? One thing that people do that you maybe see in media a lot is volumetric lighting. Um, so you know if I if I pull up the Google machine and type in volumetric lighting. Volumetric lighting. Let's see what what comes up. Images. Of course, I spelled volumetric lighting wrong. Um, but some people call refer to it as like God rays. But it's basically like when you can see the light. So like this one, you can see there's like rays of light shining through this like um, storm train. Or like here, it's 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 sort of like there's like fog or like particles in the air. So like this one here, you can see the sunlight kind of pouring around this building or like here top left you can see it like 
shining through this window. So let's let's talk about how you could do that in in Blender. With our light, uh, let's actually go to the world properties right here, and we have this volume tab. Scroll down volume, and let's open this up and you so like th this is the list of all the shaders but we can actually change this so this is like the and when and uh in blender when we're referencing the volume of something we're referencing the the inside of it so like imagine the world is like you know we're inside of a giant dome here in blender um, we're, we're addressing the volume, which is the space inside this giant dome. So if we can change select volume here and let, and do a volume scatter. So what you can see is, uh, everything went gray or depending on your color, maybe you've got black Maybe the whole world went black. Um, that is because we have now filled the world with a volume. And the density is one. So remember in Blender, one equals like 100%. So rather than doing 100% dense fog, uh, t make this point zero 0.01. Let's see what that does. Aha. So now you can see that uh, there is a, you know, glowing effect happening with our light. And so, you know, like we could, I could go shift A and uh, add like a torus and let's see how this works. Uh, and like R, rotate it a little bit, rotate it this way, oh gosh. Actually, you know what, I should start over. Shift A, add a, a torus and I want uh, my outer radius, my major radius to be like pretty fat and my minor radius to like be pretty skinny or something like that. <laughs> okay. And uh, S, Y, scale it, make it skinny like this. I just want a little hole for the light to shine through. <laughs> this is maybe a very backwards way of doing it. Um, so now, like we can see that the there are rays of light shining through the hole in the donut so this is like some dramatic lighting here and that's because um we changed the volume of our world to contain a volume scatter so it like creates fog um so like if we up the density to like 0.4 you can see that it gets more dense and there's there's like diminishing returns so like at 0.5 it's actually really thick it's almost like smoky 0.6 it's like getting darker 0.7 so like really, you know, now we're almost at one and now it's like totally dark. So like 0 0.01 is maybe a good place to start. Um, uh, and and this anisotropy um, is just like another value um, that kind of can affect this. I don't exact fully comprehend um, how what calculations it's doing but it's just like it sort of like makes it more focused versus like a little bit more spread out um so that's just you know another another value to play with so that's that's one cool thing you can do um the, the other cool effect um that you can have so actually let's i'm going to put a material on um uh, my coffee cup i should name things coffee mug mug cup let's just put a new material on here um you know let's make it let's make it like red and um turn up the specular a little bit turn down the the roughness a little bit maybe uh the other thing we can do in eevee maybe even a little metallic -y. i don't know no 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 metallic -y, bad the other thing we can do in Eevee, if, you, if we go to our render properties here, you can see we're in Eevee, um, there's another option called Bloom. And if you turn that on, it's, it's actually, it's a subtle difference right now, but look at, look at the highlights here on the mug. But, and when we turn on Bloom, 
it also like adds just like a little bit of shine like a little bit of glow to those things and so like here you can actually maybe just barely see it in my recording but if you're following along you might be able to see it too but there it like shines a little bit red too there's almost like a little bit of red glow that happens so bloom is like is a if you're using eevee it's a really kind of quick effect to kind of add a little bit more oh he, this is a great example here so the, the light is shining on this part of the donut and you can see that it's like kind of glowing a little bit there so here's it off on off on so bloom is another cool thing um, if you're if you're using Eevee, um, the other the uh, the final thing I'll show you with um, Eevee is is using an emission blender, uh, emission blender, emission material. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that one there. Um, so let's say I wanted to uh, to have like an actual glowing object. So actually, let me add a monkey in here. And let's say we want this monkey, we want to have like a monkey light in here too. And uh, so we have Suzanne here. Let's add a material to her. Let's add a new material. And on the surface, rather than principled BSDF, we can uh, make this an emission. And let's, I don't know, let's make it like a, like a kind of a purpley pink, a lavender color. Uh, and up the strength a little bit. Um, so one thing again, so now that we have Bloom on, you can see that it's like, it glows a little bit, <laughs> which, is, which is awesome, which I like. Um, but in Eevee, uh, an emission surface is not actually going to cast light on our scene unless you follow the next steps. Um, so, and actually, what, let's add one more thing in here. Um, let's add some text actually. Let's add a text. Um, let's make it. Oops. I'm going to type in, you know, neon. Uh, uh, I should I should go back to. Oh, gosh. I think neon GZ. No, I don't want that. There we go. Uh, I want Z. I want to go back to solid mode just so I can edit this text a little bit. Uh, and I want to. Whoops. Right click, or no, I want to go to object. No, where is it? Uh, convert, here it is. Convert to mesh. And I'm going to uh, tab edit A all E extrude just a little bit. Okay. And uh, RX90. Cool. So we're going to have some like neon text in here as well. So let's go back into Z, uh, render preview like this. Let's add a new material to our text. And I'll add another emission one here. Let's make this like a, a, like a neon green like this, up the strength. Cool. And then uh, we want these to actually like cast light on our scene. So um, in if you're using Eevee and you want an emission surface to cast light on your scene we need to add uh something else into our scene shift a and it's actually down here it's called light probe and what you want is an irradiance volume it's a probe to capture diffuse indirect lighting okay click that uh, it created a box in the scene here with lots of little dots in it so uh to do this and again like follow along slow down the playback if you need to we need to contain all of the uh, emission stuff inside this box so we're scaling it up so it just kind of fits our scene in here jeezy and and you really kind of want to be careful and conscious of it um and so there's a and actually so if you click on this our green tab here our object data properties for this irradiance volume um under probe here, there's a, a, there's a resolution of four in the X direction, four in the Y, four in the Z, and that's the number of dots in each direction. And probe, it's, it's going to um, try to calculate the light from each of these points. So uh, I'm not going to change these values now, but 
to start, this is maybe a low number because you, if you want a little bit more detail, a little bit better lighting, you wanna, we wanna be calculating the light from from more places. Uh, so from here, from our irradiance volume, we have to go back to our render properties. I remember, so it's this. What it said it was going to do is it's going to capture indirect lighting. Go down to indirect lighting. So we're in render properties. We're using the EV render engine. Down below we have indirect this indirect lighting tab, and we have to bake the indirect lighting. So I'm going to click on this. It'll take a moment. But now we have a pink light and a green light in our scene here. Um, I should I should right click shade smooth on that donut. So um, it it did it. You know, it's now that you can see that it's casting pink light here and here. It's casting neon light here and here. Um, but uh, notice two things. It's only really contained in this box, <laughs> as you can see on the floor that there's like a clear. Um, point where uh, where it calculated that so like you know you would expect this pink light to kind of also kind of shine down here as well um, and the other thing that's maybe not quite as easy to notice but there is um, you know it actually looks fine but like I would expect there to be more green light right here like for some reason it's like the green is very strong on this part of the donut but then just like one thing over there's like not a lot of light here and that's because it's not calculating it from enough points um, the other thing to note is that these these are not acting as lights so like if i g move this around you can see that it's actually not changing any any of the light in there because we baked the indirect lighting we hit bake so it actually like colored the surface of things that color so like if I'm even if I move I guess that it did change that um, but yeah mo moving our, our surfaces around actually doesn't change the lighting at all so if we wanted to kind of reset this um, underneath indirect lighting we delete lighting cache here and we try it again so going back to our uh, irradiance volume I'll probably make this a little bit bigger um, G not G, I'll probably S scale it out like, you know, this big. But again, you, we only need it to contain the places that we want light to shine. So like, honestly, I might uh, GX, uh, nope, GY, move it in front like this a little bit more. I might SZ because we don't need it to be shining like up in the sky. And we also don't need it to be shining underneath because that's like out of range a little bit. So uh, I'm it's probably a little bit too much SX because I want it to contain the top of the plate, GZ. Um, and then the other thing we should probably do, so go so go to our object data properties, is up the resolution, X, Y, and Z. So, you know, maybe make this like 16 by 16 by 16. So like, look at all of these points. Then, and maybe this is, maybe this is too much. Uh, and maybe this might crash my computer. So maybe I'll save real quick, Control S. Um, where are we? Spring 2022. This will be volumetric lighting. Save Blender file. Okay. And then I can go back to my render properties. I can go back to in bake indirect lighting and we'll see what that does. It's baking. Okay. So this says it's going to take 50 seconds. Okay. Let's see how that did. Yeah, it, it looks a little bit better. Maybe a little bit more realistic. But again, it's not perfect. And so rem remember, reminder, that this is this is the EV renderer. So it's, um, it's not going to give you like the super duper photorealistic stuff. But it's just, these are just like some fun things to do if, if you're not feeling like you can your computer can handle the cycles or whatever but speaking of cycles let's talk about let's let's talk about uh how we would do some of this stuff in cycles um so i'm actually i'm just going to switch over to cycles right now 
So switching over to cycles, um, automatically calculates the um, indirect lighting. So that's like that's the big advantage of cycles is it, it's it like we don't need the irradiance volume. I can delete the irradiance volume um, because it it's naturally going to calculate um, emission surfaces and the the light that it casts on things. So actually, let me let me get my camera kind of set up in a in a good space here. Like maybe I'll be like right back here. Control Alt Zero to get my camera set up. And uh, let me just make sure. So I want to do a render time limit of like thirty seconds um, here in Cycles. And let's I'm gonna do F12 and just see what a Cycles render looks like here. All right, cool. So um, here is the cycles render um it and it looks it looks pretty good but honestly i feel like we're we're missing out on some of the volumetric lighting a little bit um you know we're, we're obviously still getting a little bit of glow from around um our emission surface but like we're not really seeing the like rays of light coming through here um so let's play with that so we can go back to um we can go back to our world settings here and, you know, we can change the, the density of this, maybe up the density to 0.1 rather than 0 0.01. You know, we're starting to get like a cyberpunk vibe here. Maybe change the anisotropy NS, a little bit, see if this gives us anything different. So like the, the lower values like makes it seem like it's um, the, the light doesn't travel as far through the volume whereas higher values maybe it's the other way around the higher values seem like a little bit more localized whereas the lower value seems like it travels further through the volume it's just something that you have to kind of play with a little bit yeah so you can get some really cool effects here so the the main difference between cycles and ev when it comes to this uh is that um Cycles is like natively automatically gonna ray trace the lights and a, a specific and especially the emission lights, the your your emission surfaces, um, to calculate you know what light is is shining on what objects. Whereas in EV, you know you have to put in that um, irradiance volume to kind of make force it to make those calculations. Um, so anyway, it's it's pretty cool. I, I this is this is my kind of style of three D art. You know, this I'm kind of into this look. Um, but uh, you know, maybe you're not. So yeah, what happens? What if I like up the this light too? What if I make this like two thousand watts? So is it really gonna shine through? Yeah, and like you can do some cool stuff with like sunlight too. What if I change the radius of this? Oh yeah. I can make this a really small point, or maybe I even like move, move this light like a little bit further back. You can see like as I move it further back, it like shines a little bit straighter through the hole. Five thousand watts. I don't know. Go crazy with it. And it's really light back there. Anyway, okay. The other thing that I want to talk to you about today, I'm gonna to switch back to. Actually, you know, I'm going to turn off my volume scatter. So here in, I'm in my world properties here. I can go to volume and I can disconnect here like this. Cool. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to delete um, that. I'm going to delete that. HDRIs. Um, I'm going to open up the Google machine. Um, silver ball. So, can I type? It's late. It's almost ten. Silver ball. Um, so you maybe have like seen things like this on uh, on a movie set, like something like this, um, or like if you ever watch like the the behind the scenes of movies um, that have CG or like computer, like fully animated characters, that they'll somebody will be like walking through the scene with this silver ball and uh, 
this is so that when they add stuff into the scene, they have an idea of like what is being reflected on this surface. Um, because this is like the exact reverse of you know, what you see behind the camera or like in the background. Um, so there are like ways to create this, like an, an image like this that you can then input into a, uh, into your 3D scene so that it's actually creating and casting realistic lighting from your scene into um, your scene. I, I, did that sentence make sense? <laughs> um, now, and I will say, I'm going to get on a little tangent here for a second. Um, in the show The Mandalorian, uh, they did something, and so, and before I even talk about that, um, and it's it's like kind of a tedious process to, to make, sh like if you're creating things in 3D or like if you have a 3D environment, around you uh like think about old star wars not old but like prequel star wars stuff that's like they're they're just on a blue screen or a green screen the whole time and so then th the camera operators have to try to uh or not the camera but the, like the director of photography has to try to like use real lights on the actors not knowing what the background's actually going to look like. So a lot of times in like movies in the 2000s, 3D characters and 3D things look out of place because the lighting just doesn't quite match up between the real life stuff and the the digital stuff. Um, but what The Mandalorian did that's so cool is they created something called uh, that they call the volume. And if you have... Um, if you have Disney Plus, I highly recommend you watch the. They they made a whole series about the behind the scenes and making of the Mandalorian, but they built this studio. Can I open this in new tab? They built a studio that has a three hundred and sixty degree video wall, um, and a video ceiling. So, what they do ahead of time is they get 3D artists and 3D animators to build all of these sets digitally. And then they can put it on the screens and record the actors in like actually in front of it. So it's actually casting like, so you can see that, you know, the Mandalorian has like these really shiny, like chrome armor, but the environments are reflecting perfectly off of it because they're actually like, <laughs> The environments are actually not actually there, but visually are actually there, casting the actual reflections on it. So it's super duper cool. I highly recommend you watch the behind the scenes if you have Disney Plus, or maybe I'll maybe I'll pirate it for everyone. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about um, getting HDRs. So uh, I bookmarked uh, which one is it? Polyhaven. Go to polyhaven.com, P-O-L-Y-H-A-V-E-N.com. Um, somebody brought this to my attention uh, last semester, but it's it's a pretty cool spot that has lots of free stuff. Uh, models, textures, and, of course, we're talking about HDRIs. Um, excuse me. Uh, the textures, you know, the, it's they're not super... Uh, many of them unless you understand how to use um, like the shader nodes and some of the more advanced techniques it's not going to just like look like this right out of the box um, but it's it's cool to look at these and and if you want to dig a little bit further into how to actually put materials like this into your scene um, you can look it up or you can uh, sign up for the 3d modeling class in the fall semester um, but actually, I do think because like these these are like ready to go as blenders blender files as well. So I think you can download this as a blender file or a blender project file, and I can uh, show you how it works. But anyway, um, we're talking about HDRs. Oh, and, and I will say the another another place I recommend you go is um, oh, Paul. What is it? Polygon. Yeah, P O L. 
I I G O N Polygon. Everyone likes Poly. Um, this this place also has um, some HDRIs and textures and stuff too. Um, not all of these are free, but if you go to pol p o l i i g o n dot com, they do have textures, and they do have uh, you. I think you can s filter by free. At least you used to be able to. Yeah, here they have a free section here. Um, but the cool thing about Polygon is they have this uh, a plugin for Blender that you can just automatically import some of these uh, materials and textures in. It's just like you click a button, it's like, and it's in. So if you don't want to like learn about how um, like bump maps and those kinds of things work to create textures, um, these polygon materials can sometimes be super cool um, and just fun to play with too because it's easy. If you have the, the plugin, let's see, where can I find the plugin? I'm getting on a little bit of a tangent here. Uh, fast importing with polygon plugins here. So they've got uh, C4D, Amaya, um, and uh, Blender plugin. So you can, they, and they've got tutorials. You can follow along with that. That's polygon. But anyway, we're on uh, Polyhaven is where we are today. And uh, we're looking at their HDRIs. So let's browse HDRIs. Polyhaven, all of these are like totally free. So uh, these are like very large um Images that you know they look a little bit warped, you know, but uh, it's it's a 360 degree view of a scene. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. Like you, I'm pretty sure there's apps on your phone where you just like take a bunch of pictures in a circle, and you can create one. Um, sometimes people actually like use a DSLR camera and take lots of photos and stitch them together. Um, but they also make just like things, like little little cameras that are like, you know, the size of this light bulb that I just randomly have. And you just like hold it up and you, and it has like a couple of fisheye lenses and it takes, um, stitches together into like a 360 view. Um, but why it's called HDRI, high dynamic range, is that um, a lot of times it'll take uh, several f images at different exposures and then stitch it together so that all areas are pretty evenly lit um, so that like the dark areas they bring up the exposure and the light areas they bring down the exposure so that like everything is kind of a uniform brightness it has a high dynamic range so um, I just want to find one of these that's moderately interesting oh this one looks really good I'm looking for just like some dramatic lighting Kira one dawn let me look at this one cool um, so, uh, here I'm just going to download it. So like you can download, um, there's different resolutions, 1K, 2K, 4K, 8K, 16K. These, this is thousands of pixels wide, obviously 4K, uh, or maybe not obviously, but 4K is definitely enough for what I'm going to do right now. Um, and you can download a couple of different file formats. Either of these will work with Blender. So you just download the HDR. I'm going to hit download. It's 24 megabytes. And there it goes. Kira one Don 4K HDR. And then what I can do back in my scene here is uh, I can go to uh, my world properties and uh, underneath surface, we have color. Let me switch my camera here. We have color. Uh, click the little yellow circle, little yellow dot next to color. And um, rather than a color, we want environment texture so hit that one and it's pink because uh, remember uh, pink means like not connected or not found so we just need to open that um, the, open the one that I downloaded so uh, I'm gonna hit open and I think it's in my downloads sort by date modified here it is Kira one Don 4k HDR open image and there it is we have um, this and it actually you know it looks great like we have this like dramatic sunset here in our scene and it looks lovely um and the nice the other nice thing about hdris is that um it's actually like casting light on our scene so actually like why don't i i'm going to take out this light and take out 
Um, the donut's fine too. But you can see, like, look at the the shadow. We'll let it sit for a second. Like, there is, like, a shadow being cast by the donut that's kind of falling off kind of towards my face here. And that's because, like, in our HDRI, you can see that it's, like, brighter over here. Like, the sun is setting in this area, so it's a little bit lighter here. So it's casting a shadow here. So same with, like, the coffee mug. The coffee mug is casting a little bit of a shadow here as well. Um, so HDRIs are super cool because you can have like realistic um, like backgrounds and stuff too. Like if you if you wanted, you could probably find one with clouds if you wanted a realistic looking sky. Um, now the the thing to be aware though, it or the the thing to be aware of though is that usually you don't want to be looking down, usually. Um, because it can kind of throw your perspective off. Because like if I zoom out here and I'm looking down, it's like what, how how far how far up are we? How far down are we? But if I zoom in, then it's like oh yeah, we're we're right above the ground. So usually, um, if you're using an HDRI that has an, a lot of detail like this, um, you're gonna want to like kind of pick your angles wisely so it's not throwing your perspective off. Um, or that you're using depth of field so that your your background is is out of focus, um, or you're you're modeling things that kind of obscure that as well. Let me just find one more just just to look. Find another good one. Let me go back. I want I want something that has like some really cool lighting, some really cool like evening light. Oh, like this one looks good. Moonless Gulf. Yeah, let's see what this one's about. Let's download that one. And then it's as easy as I go back into my uh, environment or my world properties and uh, just open a different one. X out of that one and open. Go back to my downloads. Moonless Golf. Yeah, so now this one has, has much different lighting. So we can see, yeah, so there's like, this this one is like really bright over here, so you can see like there's a little shadow coming through here. This is again I'm using the cycles render. Um, EV doesn't doesn't handle it the same. In fact, it still has this other light baked on here, so I can uh, delete baking. Here we go. So it's it's doing it in more of a general way, so you can see that um, you know. It is it is like lighter here on this side. It's a little bit orange from this light. There's like a little bit of blue coming from this side, but it's not casting the the shadows and stuff. So cycles, cycles is cool. Cycles makes it looks look real nice. Hey, a little bit shorter today. Thanks for sticking around. This uh, this stuff I, I kind of get excited about because I because because I lighting really makes a difference in uh, kind of the the quality of your finished product in my opinion. So next week is spring break, so you don't have anything from me. You don't have a lecture or anything. So enjoy a week off. Um, so then the week after that will just be a lecture week. So like everything is kind of a regular every other week just gets all it all gets pushed one additional week because of spring break. So in two weeks, you'll just have a lecture and then the week after that will be a Zoom week. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, start thinking about what you want to do for your assignment five and um, happy modeling and rendering. Goodbye.